Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest. There's a gold Honda Pilot. I think that's a Pilot beside me. I think it's a Honda. I didn't look too closely yet. I just double checked the VIN number. Uh, the VIN plate and the windshield slid down a little bit, so I felt weird opening the door, but I couldn't really tell. But it was the right car, so uh, I saved myself some embarrassment there. Um, I was going to film this intro on the way up, but as you can tell, it's snowing. My windows might look more like a... Uh, no, you can tell it's snowing. There was a crash on the interstate that, that added like an extra 10 minutes. Well, the exits and on-ramps out here are, are pretty hard um, in the sense that you can't just get off and take a road up to the next exit. You have to go all through town. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't going to wait in traffic for 10 minutes, so I just added the extra 10 minutes driving through town to get to the next exit, and I only had to wait at two red lights. I'm here. I got here at the exact same time I was supposed to. I was trying to see if I could cut any time off. Uh, but I guess the GPS knew what it was doing. Well, who knows? Maybe those people are still stuck in traffic. Uh, the line was pretty short, so it might have just happened. Anyways, this car is interesting because they called me the other day and said that the battery was dead, but it was a new battery, so they thought maybe it was just an issue with the terminals. And uh, so they were bending the terminals and hooking them on themselves. And lo and behold, they hooked the battery up backwards. So now there's no power coming to anything. I don't know if that's because... The terminals are bad, so I've got new terminals with me uh, and a power probe. I put this tool kit right here inside. I didn't bring my bucket, and I just brought my like 300-piece tool kit because it has a nice plastic lid that should keep it waterproof. So I'm probably just going to get wet on this one. It is what it is. Let's hop out and check it out. Okay, I've got the keys right here. Nothing on the dash. That's what I was expecting because that's what they told me, but... I never believe anybody anymore. 100%. Double check it. Oh yeah, I didn't bring a snow wipe. That's what I'm saying. On snow days, it's worse because the snow sticks to the front and it just makes you more wet. And it's extra cold. Yeah, you open the hood, it all slides up behind it and starts dripping down. Like that. It's not very safe, but we'll see. Another one over here. That's fine. Let's put it right here. If I can, get out of there. Okay, rough. Looks like this thing's been roughed up a little bit. I say that because why is that all torn? The hole around this is bent. That's missing its bushing. That's why you ain't getting nothing now. They said they checked the main fuse and it was fine. If that's the negative, then first thing I'm going to do is replace that terminal. That positive one. Oh, you know what? I've got my umbrella in here. Okay, it's really coming down because I've only had this hit open for a minute. So I pulled this out, but I don't have the magnet base with me. So I might just rest it on my head like this. Good enough. Go grab the tools I need. Since I didn't bring my bucket, I just brought a pair of wire cutters and pliers. So hopefully that's good enough. Okay, hands and heads free. Um, I don't know why I said heads. <laughs> I've got this attached to the hood right here with a zip tie. And then I've got this zip tie just kind of pulling it out in this direction because that made it nice and stable. So I can set everything down now. And just waterproof enough to work here on the battery. And I can stand up if I keep my head bent over. So let's get to it. It should take 20, 30 minutes to get these fixed up. Oh, I left that rolling. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some felts on there. I reuse felts, that doesn't bother me if they're in good shape, so I don't charge people for those. I'll just throw them on, but that one's a little dirty. That's a little uh, earnest secret there for you. Uh, what I'm gonna have to do on this though is cut these wires, strip them back just a little bit. Um, I've never had a problem when I'm running these though, because this usually makes up for the half inch I have to cut. Okay, um, if you know what you're looking for, it's not easy to get these backwards. It's easy to just do it right. Uh, so I'm just make sure that my negative point is right there. Usually the positive will have more stuff going on around it anyways. All 
Oh yeah, it makes a difference when you got a nice sharp pair. I've been using my old pair forever because the handle's longer. But this is way easier <laughs> it's sharper. I've had those for like a year. I've used them like twice. Okay, same thing here. Strip them however you want. Just be careful if you do it this way. So that's my little trick if you saw that is to cut it upwards at an angle this way. If you cut it across, then you'll hit the wires underneath it. You can cut some of them if you cut it upwards like that. And you put some pressure on those wires, they got a lot more give. Okay, so then I'm left with about that much wire. I don't think I cut any of them. Usually don't. So I've got to do the same thing on this one now. And on wire this big, the kind of wire strippers I like to use, those ones that just grab and spool them like that, separate them, um, they don't work too well on thick, hard, dry rotted wires like that anyways that well. So pick or choose. Yeah, good thing I double checked. I don't know why I put the red one over there the whole time. <laughs> Anyways, that's what I get for using a green one instead of a black one. Double check that before I put this on. And I'll grease it up afterwards. Okay, um, that should be nice and tight. Now I'll finish tightening that up and let's go see if we've got power. That would just be nice. Okay. All right, let's see if old boy got lucky on this one. That would be nice. It is snowing way harder. I've been waiting all day, not waiting. It's been flurrying all day and now that I'm out here on this job where there's not cover, it starts coming down. Nothing. Uh oh. No bueno. Reason number 5,083 why I don't trust the customers. Um, not that I wasn't going to check it anyways, but they checked the main fuse. I don't know what they meant by that. Um, we've got a single, we've got a battery fuse. It's just labeled battery right there on this 120. 120 and 70. Right there. And then if you look right there, definitely looks like that fuse is busted right under the edge. So let me get a screwdriver. Those are probably GS, but I don't care. Phillips too. And uh, we'll take that fuse out and check. Yeah, that's a bomb. I'm gonna drop that screw, but I think I heard it hit the ground. It's wet though. Oh boy. There's your battery fuse right there. Oh, I can't backlight it. Oh, that's blinded me. See the number one right there? She's blown. Number two's fine though. Number ones are 120. That'll be it.
All right, let me find that screw then. You think, I think you have to order these specific fuses online or next day. I don't think they carry these in the store. Oh, I'm glad that screw is right there. It's a diagnosis well done. Let me go update the customer. This one was obviously easy enough for them to fix themselves, so I didn't have to go back out there for another call out. They put it back in and said it ran perfectly though, although they did have their doubts when I gave them the initial diagnosis. Don't doubt the earnest though. Hit that subscribe button, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this episode. Make sure you check out the next one right up here, I'll see you there. That's a job well done.